Deciding on which characters are going to be a part of your party is a key aspect of Granblue Fantasy Relink, as they will be by your side helping you take out the boss and get your rewards as fast as possible. And if you're playing solo, they're going to be even more important. The ideal AI companion is a character that can not only put out tons of damage, but can also support you and the rest of the party by providing buffs to aid you in combat, crowd control to neutralize bosses, and debuffs to make them easier to deal with. Also potentially even have a way to heal or revive allies when the going gets tough. And so in today's video I will be ranking every character on how good they would be as an AI companion. I'll be ranking them from C to S tier based on how much utility, damage and coverage they can provide to the team and how good the AI is at using their own unique mechanics. With that being said, my name is Dark Hero and let's get started. I do need to preface this by saying that I don't think there's a single bad character in this game, I think all of them are very competent and you're going to have fine success with just about any of them. So if you like a character don't worry about it too much, just go with the one that you like because you'll be able to do quite well with them. So we're gonna start off of course with the captain, either Gran or Jira, depending on whichever one you want to go with, Mr. Blue Hair Man over here. So the thing about the captain is that of course your arts gauge is going to be the most important thing to make sure that all of your skills deal as much damage as possible or that they are as effective as possible. So the big question here is does the AI use the charged attacks well enough? Do they level up your arts? Do they do combo finishers? And thankfully yes. And so I actually think I'm going to be rating the captain as an A tier companion. And the reason for that is quite frankly just the versatility that you have with this character. You have a couple of abilities that you can use to inflict attack down and defense down, with Miserable Mist being the one only ability I believe in the game, other than maybe Fairies on Sigil, that is able to inflict both attack down and defense down at the same time. You've got Panacea as a way to heal your teammates, you've got the ability to revive an ally very quickly, and there's only two characters in the entire game that are able to do that. You're also able to inflict slow on enemies and slow is a pretty nice CC. You can also cleanse debuffs and at the same time apply regen to your party so that is a very nice plus. And also provide you with debuff immunity which I believe is going to be very important going into Lucilius. You've also got a dispel here being able to remove a buff from the enemies. He's just a very solid character overall. Now of course rage isn't going to matter a lot in the end game as you won't need this extra attack you're going to be hitting the damage cap. That being said, Phalanx is an amazing defensive ability that you can cast at any moment and you'll be able to decrease the damage that everyone takes by 70%. This is even better than Siegfried's buff that we'll see later on that increases everybody's defense by 70%. Damage cut is simply one of the best things you can get in the entire game and being able to have 70% damage cut is insanely valuable. And you can combine Phalanx with Substitute so that you can tank hits for your allies and the thing about Substitute is that if your allies are going to uh, let's say get hit by a slow, get hit by paralysis, anything, any sort of CC, they will no longer tank it because of Substitute. So whenever a big AoE ability is coming and they're about to get hit with a nuke, you just cast substitute as well as phalanx and nobody is taking any damage except for you which is taking very little amount of damage. You can be an incredible tank with the captain. The only problem with him that I find is that his damage dealing capabilities aren't all that amazing but because of his versatility I think I'm actually going to place the captain in S tier at the end of the day. Now moving on to Catalina, I do think that Catalina has a lot going in for her. Now in terms of damage dealing Catalina is more of a burst character where she can only dish out her most damage potential in a very short window of time whenever she has Ares available and I don't think that the AI is going to take advantage of that very well. I often see that the AI gets Ares, they perform a triangle combo, they don't extend it in any way and so they end up losing Ares right away. So that is unfortunate but at the same time Catalina Catalina also has the utility that is provided by being able to freeze enemies, so that is very very powerful. And you don't actually need to have Ares when you're doing this because that only expands the area of effect for the Glaciate. So because it doesn't affect the duration, you can still get incredible value out of this skill without having Ares. Additionally, Catalina can also have a heal, she can have invincibility and share that invincibility among the party, so that is an incredible buff, although again she needs 
needs to have Ares summoned. And the same goes for the Emerald Shield, where she is able to boost her defense and the party's defense by 15% and provide them all with Stout Heart. These are all very valuable things. I think the AI not being very consistent is what makes Catalina not be an S tier companion. But again, when she lands that party wide invincibility, it's absolutely nuts. So I think taking all of this into consideration, just because the AI isn't the best, I'm going to be placing Katarina as an A tier companion. Now, as for Rackham, I'm sorry to say, but Rackham really doesn't offer much to the party. Everything about Rackham is damage. He is a very selfish DPS character that can still pull off some pretty decent DPS, but he is not the best by far. There are a lot better companions in that regard. And honestly, I just wish that Rackham had some way to slow down the enemy, maybe inflict them with paralysis. And I'm not sure if the AI can dodge out of the collateral damage consistently, so that could be trouble as well. So I think that this is just not a very good AI companion, so I think that at the end of the day I would rate Rackham as a C tier companion. The next one is going to be Io, and as much as I wanted this character to be a fantastic companion, I honestly don't think she is all that great. And that is mostly because of Io's basic mechanic. The fact that she has to use the Stargaze and she has to essentially play like a Black Mage where she isn't very mobile and she needs to charge her spells kind of makes it so that a lot of times IOs, whenever they are the AI companion, just won't use Mystic Vortex and their spells very effectively. And so I find that IOs just tend to not deal a lot of damage, which this character is all about dealing tons of damage. That being said, Io does have a 10% attack decrease, a 10% defense decrease, as well as a paralysis ability, and there's only three different paralysis in the entire game. So those are some pretty good pluses in her favor. And she is also able to heal the party with healing wins, but I just think that Io ends up lacking a lot where this character is supposed to excel at. So I think that, honestly, at the end of the day, I think I'm going to be rating Io as a B-tier companion. I almost want to put her at C-tier, but because she has Paralysis attack down and defense down, that makes her a lot better. But again, she just could be so much better of a companion if the AI would play well with her mechanic. Yeah, her Paralysis carries, yes, but if the only reason you're going with Io is the Paralysis, or even just the heals, why would you not go with Eugen, which is the next character? So Eugen is by far one of the highest damaging characters in the entire game, and the comparisons are very few. On top of that, his damaging skills like Sumrak, which is this constant beam that he's able to use, the AI will always, always, always be able to hit the beam, and the damage output of it is absolutely nuts, especially against bosses that you are able to hit multiple times. Eugen is just an insanely good character. Then you also have Armor Piercing Rounds, which does a lot of damage, and he is able to use it very quickly. He can use Healing Bullet to be able to heal someone, he can gain Stout Heart thanks to Intercept. On top of that, he's also got Defense Down with Poison at the same time. And again, he's got that Paralysis, which a lot of characters lack, as there are only 3 Paralysis in the entire game. And this is by far the best CC in the game. So honestly, there isn't much else to say, Eugen is straight up an S tier companion. I don't think there are any arguments to this besides maybe the fact that the AI Eugen tends to die a little bit more than other companions because getting out of sniper mode does take a little bit of a time. But the amount of damage, the amount of utility this character has is just ridiculous. So the next character is going to be Rosetta and part of me wants to say that Rosetta is an insanely good AI companion because of how much she is able to offer the team but at the same time she is not 100% consistent. So Rosetta is all about placing down the roses and then using those roses to deal damage, apply debuffs to the enemies and provide utility to the team. Thankfully, the Rose placement, regardless of where they are, you are still able to get the benefits from them. So if she is using the heal over time from the plants, which would be the bouquet skill, or if she is using the Rose Barrier to provide a damage cut percentage to your team, she is also very good. Because again, you don't need to be near the Roses, the effect will still work. However, the problem with AI Rosetta is that very often she will place down a Rose when the boss is about to move, or even next to one single monster or one single orb that is present on the map and very far away from the actual boss. 
And so unless you have this skill right here, which is what allows Rosetta to move her plants towards the enemies, you may be kind of screwed because, you know, you're going to be missing out on a lot of damage that way. If the poison skill is on cooldown, there is a very decent chance that the AI will not be able to use her roses effectively unless they actually were able to plant them in the right spot. So you are very much dependent on that, you need to be careful. You need to take that into consideration because that is actually what is going to prevent Rosetta from being an S tier in my opinion. Because given the rest of her toolkit being able to keep on attacking enemies non-stop, she's able to generate SBA gauge very quickly because of how much range she has and how often she attacks as well so if it weren't for that ai inconsistency i would place her in the s tier but because of that i will be placing rosetta as an a tier character for ai companions now the next character is going to be charlotta and i actually have a lot to say about charlotta she is a very easy character that is always going to perform very well and there's actually this unique thing where so you know how with a lot of fast attacking characters everything you do is about spamming the light attack for a very long time like Lancelot does this as well for some reason the AI Lancelot is not able to infinitely keep on spamming this if that is a good situation for you to do it like for example if the monster is downed the AI Lancelot will not be spamming this but the AI Charlotta will actually do this so for that reason alone, the AI Charlotta is actually very good in, when it comes to damage. On top of that, Charlotta is just a character that has a lot of utility. By herself, she has an ability that makes her invincible for a pretty long time, so I would say that that is very good. Additionally, she has a skill that allows her to buff herself and the rest of her allies to be able to get a 50% damage resistance, which as I talked before with the captain is a very big deal, so definitely do not overlook this skill. Her being able to raise the attack doesn't really matter too much because as we already talked about the damage cap is a thing so you won't get much benefit from this. Her offensive abilities are actually very easy for the AI to land and because they allow also the AI to gap close onto the enemy and again she is able to do the infinite combo, she is going to actually deal a lot of damage as an AI companion and she also generates a lot of SBA gauge so with the sacred charge she would also be able to redistribute SBA among the allies. Now I don't think that this is a big of a deal, I thought you might be able to make a build where Charlotta simply is focused on generating gauge and then giving it to the allies, but it seems like it's not that amazing, so sadly I don't think that is an actual thing you can do very well. But again, because she does have a lot of utility with this alone, and she is a very reliable DPS, with even the ability to inflate defense down, although it's not amazing, I do personally believe that she is going to be an A tier AI companion, mostly because she she is so reliable, she never lets you down, she's always able to deal damage, and for my personal experience, she just never goes down. Now, up next, we have Gandagosa, one of the slowest characters in the entire game, with the only comparison really being Vazraga. Gandagosa does have some party wide utility, he has a buff that grants him hostility, so the enemies will be more likely to attack him. He also gains stout heart, so he becomes an interruptible when he uses this, so he can kind of act like a tank on your party. The AI isn't really going to use Jammed very well, which boosts your attack based on how low your HP is. He also provides you with a slow, which is an AoE slow, so it is very easy to land that slow. And by himself, he is able to also recover health and remove debuffs, so he is able to sustain himself and be a pretty decent tank by itself. Now, because of how slow this character is and the fact that he relies so much on his own unique mechanic to deal powerful attacks with his charged attack, I really do believe that the AI is terrible at utilizing every single tool that is available in Gandagos's kit, and so he just ends up falling off as an AI companion in my opinion. There's really nothing that is appealing about having him in the party other than if you like having him, you may want to run him, and so I would say that Gandagosa is a C tier companion. Now next up we have Fairy. Fairy is a character that is able to attack from a pretty decent range and with the help of her pets she is able to constantly deal damage to enemies even when the boss is in its bloodthirsty phase. You'll often see Fairy's pets on the ground dealing damage to it. Even though it's not a lot of damage, it does add up eventually. And Fairy is by far one of the best debuffers in the entire game as thanks to Phantasm's Concord she is able to inflict the enemies with 20% attack down and 20% defense down and because the pets will constantly be attacking, even though it only lasts for 10 seconds, they will keep on reapplying this debuff, and also they will deal more damage thanks to this sigil. Now, as for her skills, 
Quarch Spirits is an ability that has a ton of stun power and if you just add even just a little bit more into her kit by adding a stun power sigil, she is going to break the enemy so often she is a powerhouse of a companion. Heinrichten and Umlauf are very powerful skills that enable Fairy to deal tons of damage, but I don't think they are amazing for an AI companion, but I do believe that using all of those other skills, being able to slow the enemies while summoning one of her pets, using Purge Spirits as well as Strafe to summon all of her pets again, and also using Benediction to get that regen for the team as well as the defense bonus, I do believe that Fairy is a very very good AI companion. And honestly, if you take into account her signature sigil, I would say that Fairy is an S tier AI companion. I don't think she is going to make much use of these two skills, but everything else she is going to do very well, and you can use Benediction as sort of a way to top off your allies without necessarily having a proper heal on the team. And again, you're not going to take advantage of the attack boost, but you do get the defense bonus as well, so I very much like Fairy as an AI companion. Now, as for Narmaya. Narmai is actually a lot more competent as an AI companion than I thought she would be. She is able to very often swap stances at the right time and actually perform the parries with the swap stances, so she is very effective in that regard. That being said, because Narmaya's damage relies so much on having as many butterflies as possible, ideally you would have 7 butterflies whenever you start to use an ability, the AI companion is not really going to wait around until you have 7 butterflies available. More likely than not, they are going to use the abilities as soon as they can, and oftentimes they'll even use them without any butterflies. That being said, I've had AI companion Narmaya's that have actually taken MVP quite a few times, because the character simply deals a ton of damage, and and with Dance of Pink Petals being something that grants them stout heart and supplementary damage, and the AI actually being very good at parrying attacks, they are able to have a very good uptime on their DPS, and so they are actually quite good at dealing damage. Now, Narmaya is able to also become more sustainable thanks to Dance of Blue Petals, where she is able to boost her defense by 40% and also heal at the same time while gaining 3 butterflies. She also has a slow that is able to perform by parrying an attack and also removes a buff from enemies, so that is some party wide utility, although because it is reliant on hitting a parry. It's not as good, because sometimes the AI will actually use this skill when there is nothing happening, and so they will parry nothing, they will waste the skill, and you end up with a wasted slot, and the enemy is not slowed. And other devotion, you could argue that you could use this to make Narumaya a little bit of a tank since it grants her hostility while also giving defense down to enemies, but I don't think it's particularly amazing, so if you're going to use Narumaya as an AI companion, I think that she's going to do quite well as a DPSer, but not much else. And so I would rank Narumaya as a B tier character, simply because she is able to dish out pretty consistent damage, but not much more than that. Now, up next, we have my boy Lancelot. So Lancelot has a lot of abilities that allow him to dodge incoming damage, which makes him one of the more sustainable AI companions in the game, having Mirror Image, Turbulence, which also launches him into the air to dodge attacks, being able to use his Triangle attack to dodge attacks as well, He's just a very offensive character that is able to keep a very good uptime on DPS, and he is also able to freeze enemies. So, as I explained before with Catalina, this is a huge deal as it is a very powerful CC ability that is going to give everybody else time to deal damage. And a lot of times, from what I've seen, Lancelot will actually do this whenever the boss is about to perform a big AoE ability, so Having a character that deals very good damage, is able to dodge attacks and also freeze enemies is a very big advantage. That being said, there is one reason in particular why I wouldn't rank Lancelot as an S tier character for an AI companion, I would actually rate him as an A tier character for this reason alone. And that is quite simply that a lot of times the AI Lancelot will perform a skill, get into his infinite combo and do a combo finisher right away. As I said before with Charlotta, where a lot of times when you have optimal time to do this, the best solution would be to simply mash your attack button to deal as much damage as possible, but the AI companion for Lancelot will not do this. I don't know why that's the case, but he is missing out on his strongest ability to deal damage because he often simply defaults into going into a combo finisher. And again, Charlotta on the other hand is able to do that. I don't know why that's the case, but this is the only reason that is stopping me from ranking Lancelot higher on the list.
Now the next character is going to be Vayne, and as much as I like this dude, and when you take a look at his skills you think that he's going to be the perfect tank as your AI companion. You know, he is able to buff himself, granting him attack, defense and guts. He can also make himself more likely to be targeted by enemies by granting hostility and also raising his attack, though the attack isn't really going to matter much. And he also has the ability to place down a dome that grants him and the rest of the party invincibility. The thing is that the AI is just going to place this down, they're not going to even hold it for the longest duration possible and they're going to do it at the wrong time. Now the AI does use the right combo finishers and Vayne is able to sustain himself well enough, but it's just that if you want Vayne to, do a, to become a proper tank that puts down the shield whenever the big AoE mechanics come down, that is simply not going to happen with the AI companion, I'm sorry to tell you. They're not going to take advantage of all of these tools and so Vayne is just going to be a weak DPS because his damage output is decent but it's not really all that great. So and because he doesn't provide any CC see as well and the buffs that he gets are all for himself it just ends up being a very bad AI companion so with all of this said I'm going to be ranking Vayne as a C tier AI companion the next character on the list is going to be Percival and this may actually surprise you but I do believe that Percival is an incredibly powerful AI companion a lot better than I first expected because the AI companion is able to dodge out of the way of so many attacks and they're actually capable of timing Percival's own charged attack, I believe it is called Schlatt, they're able to time the Schlatt to parry the attacks and also hit the enemy at the same time, they're actually going to be able to maintain very high HP for most of the quest, which means that they can also use this skill, which I think is spelled Trauma Ray, which will boost your attack by 70% and also give you supplementary damage to just deal tons of damage. They can also place down the Rotor Wild Ball to deal just insane amounts of damage. Unfortunately, the AI will sometimes place this in the wrong spot or they will place it whenever the boss is about to move and whenever this is your biggest damaging ability, eh, it's kind of uh, an unfortunate thing. But the damage output of Percival is just absolutely insane as an AI companion. If I were to say which AI companions deal the most damage, I would say that it's between this and Eugen. Now on top of the already insane damage output that Percival is able to dish out, a lot of his other abilities are also very easy to land, with Royal Authority covering an entire arena, this one being a flaming combo that is very easy to hit, and both Max and this one are being gap closers that are targeted, the AI is always going to be able to land those, so he's just a very consistent character. He's also got this ability that applies both a slow and a defense down, and when most characters are only able to apply a slow and nothing else, being able to apply both a slow and a defense down is very very good. He is able to provide attack and defense to the entire party as well, which is quite nice. Of course I'm talking about the defense bonus, the attack isn't really going to matter as much. I do believe that he is just a fantastic AI companion, whose only downside is the lack of CC, but whenever he brings so much DPS to the table, and he even has a little bit of CC with this ability, I do believe that Percival is deserving of being an S tier AI companion. Now the next companion is going to be Siegfried. And there's actually quite a lot to Siegfried, because he is a character that relies on timing, you might be concerned that the AI isn't capable of nailing those timings down, but thankfully the AI will actually do them at the right time. So when it comes to the damage dealing combos, Siegfried has got you covered. Additionally, Siegfried is a beast of a character that is going to power through attacks, as he gains stout heart and defense as he's able to perform his perfect timings, and because the AI will be able to do that, you can count on him to non-stop keep on hitting the enemies as much as possible. Additionally, he does have some party-wide utility, with Verdragon being a shockwave that is able to deal pretty decent damage and inflict defense down on enemies. Defense down is decent, but it's not the best thing ever. And what I think makes Siegfried an S-tier companion are these two abilities, Salvatore and Mirage. Salvatore is going to provide you with debuff immunity, so you don't have to worry about being burned, frozen, paralyzed, anything. And I do believe that this is going to be very, very important against Lucilius, so keep that in mind as we get that new content. And it also provides you with some drain, so if you have a drain sigil equipped on top of Salvatore, you will be healing for a thousand each time you hit an enemy, which is just amazing. 
And on top of that, Mirage being able to boost the defense of your entire party by 70% is going to be absolutely ridiculous. It is by far one of the best ways to provide some coverage to your team and make them all more sustainable. And because this skill actually has a pretty short cooldown considering how powerful it is, very often you'll be able to have this available and the AI will pop this whenever the boss enters Bloodthirst so you can count on this to reduce a lot of the damage that you would take. I use Nella Nev because it has a very high amount of stun so I can a lot of times rely on my Siegfried to actually trigger more link attacks and of course link attacks are just very valuable so that is amazing. Now let's move on to Cagliostro, a character that I believe was going to be the best character in the game that should be in every party. I was going to place her in the S tier and it was for this reason alone, Phantasmagoria is the only way to increase the critical hit rate of your party members and so you'll be able to always deal crits which will deal more damage and at the same time boosting attack and defense which does stack with all the other attack and defense buffs that you can get in the game, it's a fantastic buff. The problem however is that damage cap is a thing and so the attack buff isn't going to matter much not even the critical hit rate is going to matter all that much because you'll be hitting the damage cap in most cases. And that is why her unique sigil that also applies defense down each time she lands a charged attack isn't going to matter as much in the end game if you are fully maxed out because you'll still be hitting the damage cap regardless of the defense down so that becomes a lot less useful. That being said, being able to boost the defense on top of any other existing defense buff and being able to also lower the enemy's attack, although the AI doesn't use her traps very well, very often the AI will just use this skill wherever the enemy is which will not trigger the attack down, it's still very good value. She also has Disruption which is able to remove a buff from an enemy and I do believe that this is going to be important against Lucilius and she's got the ability to res a teammate as well as being able to heal them so she is able to be a very powerful support. Additionally she can also use some pretty powerful offensive skills with Pain Train dealing a lot more damage than you would expect for a gap closer and Alexandria and Mimic Doll dealing pretty decent damage and allowing her to use her charged attack more often. So if the AI uses this, follows it up with a charged attack and fully charges it they'll be able to inflict defense down more often but again it's not going to be amazing in most scenarios. I am honestly very sad to say that Cagliostro is going to be an A tier character and not an S tier character simply because a lot of these buffs and utility that she has will not work in most cases. That being said if you are not yet to be fully capped out then Cagliostro is an S tier character in those instances because her bonuses are that amazing. And again it should not be overlooked the ability to res a teammate or if you prefer the ability to heal a teammate along with everything else she has going for her. I do believe that at the very least even though you won't be able to use some of these beneficial traits in the end game she is going to still be very much an A tier character but let's say that tomorrow is day one for Lucilius she is an S tier character because now the defense down and the Phantasmagoria are going to matter a lot more. So yeah, that, that's honestly how, how I feel about Cagliostro. It's like depending on where you are in the game she's either an A tier character or an S tier character. Now next up we have Yodarha. And Yodarha you would think that maybe he is a very competent AI companion since Whenever he performs a combo finisher, he's able to dodge out of attacks, he becomes invincible. He's also got an ability that gives a mirror image and he's actually able to give mirror image to the rest of the party. He doesn't provide any party-wide utility other than that, but the ability to make it so that your allies will be able to tank 3 hits without taking damage is fantastic. However, the big problem here is that, quite simply, as an AI companion will waste all of your stamps and will not use mirror image whenever you have all 3 available. That very rarely happens, I played with him for like 30 quests and in only a couple of them did I see him do that. Very often he will just use perpetual rotation and not do much else, he kinda just throws as many skills as they are available and so you won't be able to get the only party wide utility that he would be able to grant your teammates. I do feel like he is very much worth placing in the B tier solely because he is a character that does have a pretty good damage output and he is able to simply dodge out of the way of most things. So having a character that just never dies makes him a very reliable AI companion so in that sense he is very much worth placing in the B tier. 
But now let's go over to Zeta. Now Zeta is a character that actually has potential to be a very powerful AI companion. Not only is she able to avoid incoming damage very often by just being up in the air dealing damage non-stop, she's got the best CC in the game in the form of paralysis, she can use supplementary damage to increase her damage output, she can also inflict attack down, which will make your team a lot more survivable, if that is a word. And so you would think that maybe Zeta is a pretty solid AI companion character. But sadly the AI simply does not play Zeta too well. A lot of times they will be playing mostly on the ground, they won't do much and a lot of times I see them do one single aerial combo and do the finisher right away, which means that they won't be applying Arves for Mare, which is the Zeta debuff that makes her do a lot more damage. And at the same time the combo finisher is really what deals the most damage for Zeta so she really wants to nail those combo finishers. And when the AI is not doing that, she just ends up being a very lackluster grounded DPS when she should be up in the air dodging attacks and attacking at the same time. So even though Zeta has again the best CC in the entire game and is also to provide some party wide utility with a 10 to 15 second attack down, I do think that she belongs in the C tier for AI companions. And Vazraga is one of the slowest characters in the game, his old kit is about charging up those big powerful charged attacks and using the skills that also deal a ton of damage to use those charged attacks even faster. In that sense he is actually a lot faster than Gandagoza at dealing DPS and he is actually pretty sustainable on his own thanks to Immortal Pain which makes him unable to die for a very long amount of time and also provides him with debuff immunity. He has an AoE slow which is also quite nice and thanks to Violent Shadows he is able to heal himself for quite a lot of HP so as long as he is able to keep on pressing this button. That being said, I'm just going to straight up say that this character is a CTR AI companion because a lot of times the AI does not charge the attacks or does not combo the skills into the charged attacks and even a lot of times you'll see that your Vazaraga does not have stout heart because hey the AI is forgetting to press the button. It's a very 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 underwhelming character as an AI companion when I think that he could play as a very powerful tank that is able to generate aggro and deal tons of damage and you would be able to have him on the battlefield at 1 HP for a very long amount of time. Additionally, if you have Vazaraga on your team, a lot of times he will actually go ahead and use Immortal Pain, which makes it so you cannot die and remain at 1 HP, and use Violent Shadows right after, which is the skill that heals you. Why are you healing? You're not going to die. The AI doesn't know that, however. So they're kind of just wasting damage they would be able to deal while the Immortal Pain is active, and they are going to be placing Violent Shadows on cooldown, and whenever the buff runs out, Vazaraga is instantly put at 1 HP, he will no longer have the skill that is actually able to heal him. It's just a terrible, terrible AI companion in my opinion. He does still provide you with some party-wide utility, but honestly, just he's not going to do a lot of damage. Because he is so slow, he'll often start charging up attacks when the boss is about to move. It's just a lot of wrong things at the same time. And so I cannot place Vasaraga any higher than C tier for an AI companion. The final character is going to be Id, which I did believe initially he was going to be an S tier AI companion. However, the more I play with him, the sadder I get honestly, because the AI doesn't do a lot of things that you would hope they would do. So when it comes to party wide utility, he is able to still use substitute much like the captain is able to use. However, because he doesn't have phalanx, which is what provides the party wide 70% damage reduction, atonement isn't going to be all that amazing and it might just outright die because of atonement. Now, Fourfold Vengeance is a charge up skill where it just takes damage while he is charging and then he unleashes a very powerful attack. And a lot of times the AI would start this up and cancel it midway through, so it is just taking damage without doing anything. And a lot of times they would do this without charging it up all the way, or they would get hit in the middle of charging it, so it was just not a very good skill to run on your AI. Now it does have an AoE slow, which is pretty good being able to CC the enemies like so, and he does have plenty of damage with his damaging abilities. The problem however with it is that he also has Dragon Mode and then he also has God Might as well. Now, the thing with Ragnarok form is that it instantly puts it into Dragon Mode. When that happens, all of his cooldowns are back so he can use all four of his buttons to do big damage in Dragon form and he has access to another slow that also burns the enemies. That is very powerful 
that is very cool. And so you could go ahead and equip Arcadia and you would essentially have two different slows on the same character that you're able to rotate between at a pretty decent pace. However, the problem is that if you want to do as much damage as possible or be as effective as possible with it, you kinda want to save up Ragnarok form for whenever you are in God Might to reset the duration of God Might, do even more powerful attacks since that is the window of time where it truly shines and deals as much damage as possible. And the AI will quite simply be using Ragnarok form right away, or what I found to be even worse, is the AI will actually play in base form it for let's say 30 seconds before they go ahead and use Ragnarok form. So essentially they're just going to be missing out on damage because they're not going to throw these skills going to Ragnarok form and then going to God Might form and use more skills. No, they're going to be messing around in base form for a very long time and so your damage output is going to be very very low. Again, you still do have a couple of slows that you can run with it, but because his window of burst damage in God Might is very much susceptible to being just lost because the enemy goes into bloodthirst, the enemy flies away, or because the AI it simply does not keep on extending the combos by using skills or keep on using the combo finishers, your damage output is just going to be very very low as an AI companion. It's very sad to see because I did expect him to be pretty decent but honestly it ends up lacking a lot and he just wastes all of his cooldowns and DPS. So even though it ends up having two different slows that he can have, I think I'm going to be placing him in the C tier. I'm going to be talking about my ideal party composition very soon and if you want to know how I would rank every character in the game, as a playable character that is, stay tuned for more. With that being said, my name is Dark Hero, thank you all so much for watching and as always, happy hunting!